So this is a run through of a lecture that I'll be giving this week on rain screen facade systems. And uh, the best way to really get you introduced to this is probably just to show you a cutaway illustration. So here we have a wall assembly, a facade. Um, the, I'll just indicate a couple of the things here. The, some of the obvious, maybe the rain, the raindrops um, um, uh, impinging upon the system, possibly driven by rain. And then the idea of a rain screen system is how it reacts to that kind of external moisture. Um, so a couple of things to uh, keep in mind, even though we're showing what would be an extruded terracotta panel um, attached with a clip system, this could really be many different types of systems from bricks to wood systems to wood clapboards, um, 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 glass reinforced fiber, concrete, you name it. Uh, any kind of panel system uh, that can de deliver the kind of structural um, integrity that we need um, to do the performative aspects of this. <clears throat> so, well, but with that in mind, in this case with the terracotta tiles, there's an attachment system that's proprietary to the panel manufacturer. There's a couple of people that make these types of panels, NBK, Boston Valley de Terracotta. Um, I think this is actually NBK's attachment system. Um, and uh, just something to note, all systems will have an attachment system. It could be as simple as a piece of wood here instead of a piece of aluminum extrusion, uh, depending on the nature of the materials you're using. <clears throat> something that is really unique um, and identifies rain screen systems almost uh, all the time is the idea of this exterior insulation um, and an empty wall cavity behind it. And um, uh, obviously, the first thing that comes to mind are concerns about what happens with moisture getting in there and the insulation. And one of the reasons why that insulation is there is specifically to the idea that that does have the possibility of becoming wet. But before we talk about uh, insulation, let's just take a minute and look at the next thing that's behind it. That is a blue, it could be um, in trade, in, um, a trade name for that is a blue skin. It's an air and moisture barrier. Um, please note I'm not saying a vapor barrier. Um, it could be vapor permeable, but not water permeable, but it is definitely an air barrier, which is part of the critical functioning of this system. And then um, once again, I want to note the idea that there is a wall cavity behind it that does not have any insulation in it or anything that could get wet and retain moisture. Um, that's not, ex that is, um, not always the case. Some rain screen systems have now insulation systems in them, but it's really important to keep in mind the issues that are um, developed when you in insert insulation within that cavity, mostly about it getting wet and not being able to dry. Um, but another thing about the wall cavity, the wall cavity is a structural element, and even in a curtain wall system, it is bearing the deflection load of the wall system uh, from wind load. It's also taking the gravity load of the panel system um, uh, that uh, is on, on the face here. And so you'll notice that the panels are very heavy if they're terracotta and they're way far out away from that wall cavity. So there has to be a lot of structure going on in order to support that. And that's kind of illustrated by that aluminum vertical grid um, track system. Now, um, one of the most important things about rain screen systems that identify them is this idea of venting. Um, they're very open. Now, in this case, the gap has a convolution to it to um, kind of deflect any water that would come through it. But there are rain screen systems where that joint is actually completely open, just a gap. Um, and the idea is, is that air can move in and out. If the insulation gets wet, it's not a concern because air will then dry it out. So it's, it's anticipated that some amount of moisture may in fact impinge upon the insulation and um, it's quickly dealt with by the fact that the thing is ventilated and can quickly dry out. So the, the whole concept between rain screen systems, uh, uh, and I'll cover this a little more in detail as we move along in the slide presentation, is really keeping the moisture out of the inside of the building. And um, just a little more to illustrate that, there's always this idea of an air gap between the insulation and the exterior facade material. Now, um, you may have been exposed to that before and then maybe even lost the concepts of it because one of the problems we have in BIM modeling, building information modeling, is really the lack of detail that happens when we create these wall assemblies. So there are some companies who have addressed that. Um, 
uh, to some level of extent. The problem is they're proprietary to each manufacturer. In this case, Steny, that may, a panel manufacturer, has a system that you can use as a plugin that will allow you to create all of the kind of technical details that go behind that um, kind of rain screen or gridded system um, level of construction. So keep that in mind. This is going to lead us into the way we do our project in the, um, in the actual um, hands-on component of um, our rain screen experiments. So I'd like to show you a field example of that kind of a rain screen system um, to help you identify um, its construction techniques as it's being built, um, just to help you um, just be more fulfilled. Uh, familiar with uh, the things you see on buildings while they're being constructed. So in this case, I have a local example on the Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus. It is by HOK. It is the, um, um, the uh, UB Medical School. I think it's called the Jacobs Institute. Um, a huge structure, um, a flagship um, medical campus building on our um, downtown uh, medical campus. And this is it under construction. This is a shot I took. Um, of the, of the panels going on to the, the facade of the building. And I have a couple of um, uh, uh, details of this that I can call out some of the notes. Um, this, um, the panel system, the terracotta tiles that are being applied are by Boston Valley Terracotta. They're in Orchard Park. They're a local manufacturer of these, um, these ceramic tile systems. Um, and they're uh, really in popular use in these rain screen type systems. So just a few of the details when you look up close. Once again, these um, systems have to be attached to that kind of cavity wall that's behind it. And so there's a lot of structure that goes on um, um, to reach out and support those panels. And one of them is a horizontal rail and sometimes referred to as a horizontal girt, a Z-girt. Um, and that is to allow the attachment of the vertical rails. Um, oops, I've got this a little out of order. Um, but that's the insulation in between those Z-girts. And then we have the vertical rails, the long rails going all the way up continuously, sometimes breaking under windows. And those are where the clips will go to actually attach the panel systems. A couple of things to take note of um, is this kind of idea of the thickness of rain screen systems. Because we have the insulation on the exterior of the building, that air gap, and then the panel system, the wall assembly becomes very deep. And when you place a window in it, there are always issues about the relationship of where the glazing plane is to where the front facade plane is, and also what happens at the edge of the panel as it relates to the window. So in this case, note how the panel is coming up flush to what is a trim tab on the exterior of the window assembly. And um, this is also kind of a unique project in that it looks like a punched window um, system, really um, kind of cleverly articulated, spanning sometimes multiple floors. You can see that those are likely spandrel panels that look like glass, kind of to fill out uh, the idea of what the window assembly looks like. And a couple of th other things to note, but just the uniqueness of some of the, or maybe even the oddness of some of the windows, um, just in order to create an interesting facade, some of the window um, are very long and narrow in the assembly. And also just as a, uh, not related to rain screens, but you can see the, the uh, bracing on the, um, on the first, uh, first level um, um, over the podium of the building, and that's probably for seismic bracing. Okay, so it, it might, um, I might not have started this out properly, but the, the, the idea of rain screen systems, why water matters, why we're talking about rain or, or exterior moisture getting into the building, is because water creates a lot of problems with building construction. So, um, and one of our first orders um, you know, in architecture is to create a habitable environment with the buildings that we create. So it, it, um, it became relatively apparent um, in residential construction, and this gives you some really good graphic examples of what happens when moisture can get underneath the facade of a building. So in this case, we have wood frame construction and we have oriented strand board. You can see the insulation. You can see the dark um, decay of the oriented strand board and actually um, uh, what looks like it's actually fallen from the building. It's no longer struck, has any structural integrity. And this is because water has gotten behind the facade system. Um, and this is a, 
Uh, the shadow is a little bit distracting, but this is a really good example of what the problem is, especially in, in this example of residential construction, and this can be commercial too, where we have a, um, a synthetic stucco applied over an, in, an insulation board like styrofoam over wood frame construction, which might have a sheathing on it of oriented strand board. So um, if you look at the surrounding um, uh, stucco, you'll notice there's no signs of rot and decay or any kind of damage. As a matter of fact, all of this could have been looking perfectly fine, but underneath all of this water damage could be occurring without us being able to see it. And that's because stucco systems, as much as they look to be impermeable, around windows there's always gaps that can form. Even if you seal those gaps, thawing and cycl cyclical temperature changes can open those cracks up again and allow moisture to enter. And the next question you ask is, well, if there are only little cracks, a little bit, of, only a little bit of moisture will get in. And that's where the idea of pressure-driven water intrusion comes from. So there's pressure differentials between the exterior of the building and the interior of the building created. Um, it could be from wind loads. Um, you can imagine, you, you understand the concept of when there's a tornado, um, the windows of a building will blow out because of low pressure. Well, you can imagine that fluctuation and just normal wind wind loading on a building can create pressure differentials that can actually suck large amounts of moisture into the building through small cracks. And um, once they're in, they have no way to ventilate or get out because they have no ventilation system in them. So that's the start of that. So I'm gonna really actually retell that whole idea of rain screen systems again in a uh, presentation that's uh, been created by um, a building products manufacturer. And I'll do that next.